Greetings! If you are watching this video, then you likely already know what happened and you're probably still in a celebratory state. And if you aren't and you're seeing this video weeks or months later, then god damn it, YouTube. E3 came and went with some high notes it's spooky. and some low notes. Oh, this ain't it, Chief. One thing stood out for a crap ton of people. Command a keen mobile game, baby, come on. Ah! But Nintendo's Direct specifically was arguably the most amazing Direct I've ever seen, or E3 presentation I've ever seen. The Hero makes his debut delighting thousands of Japanese fans and boring thousands of American fans. We got some good things like Luigi Mansion looking pretty damn good, Astral Chain, The Witcher defying all logic, I still can't believe that's a thing. Dark Crystal because, you know, with Netflix, mm, that, that app that people have been requesting to be on the Switch for, I don't know, two going on three years? Yeah, no, let's not, let's not put that on there. Let's put a Dark Crystal game on there because I have been asking for Dark Crystal since, uh, never. Ah! No More Heroes 3 surprisingly gets announced so I can get more terrible jokes but get awesome, fantastical gameplay. July? If not, is the Empire striking back or what? Banjo and Kazooie get finally announced for Smash Brothers, and we got a new Animal Crossing game. Holy crap, Banjo and Kazooie are actually in Smash Brothers. The dynamic duo finally get included in Smash Brothers after 20 long, arduous years. Banjo and Kazooie delighting thousands of American fans and boring thousands of Japanese fans in the process. So, why Banjo Kazooie? Why give a crap? Well, let's go ahead and go over it. And if you so happen to be new around these parts and have never heard of Banjo, then allow me to introduce myself. Hello, this is Casualverse. To the bottom right hand corner of this video, you will see a red button titled subscribe. And somewhere in that general vicinity of that subscribe button, you will see a bell shaped icon. Hit that bad boy so you can get more goodness from me. It's my cute way of asking you to subscribe to me. I don't know how else I can ask or a better way to do it. So, so, shush. so my reasons for the importance of Banjo and Kazooie being included in Smash Brothers are as follows. Microsoft and Nintendo, they seem a little more pro-consumer than normal and less fighty. Uh, it's become a standard thing for YouTubers that talk about this uh, situation. Uh, they're, you know, they're cozy, ooh, they're so cozy, like over and over. I'm pretty sure you're sick of hearing it, but they have. But the fact of the matter is they still compete. I think what's happening with Nintendo is Nintendo doesn't, like Nintendo competes, but they don't want to be known for competing. They want to be, they want this comp, and it's pretty smart too. They want this complimentary role as a verse to, hey, I, you know, I gotta be the next Square Gaming box instead of, like they don't want to be uh, Sony or Microsoft. And you know, that's business one-on-one is you want to differentiate yourself. Uh, it's very smart that they're that they're taking this route because the fact of the matter is, you know, people and this is why they actually still compete, even though Nintendo wants to set themselves up as not as more of a non-competitive role, uh, because the people that buy their products more often than not, a lot of us have a very fixed income. So we can't just buy every console. So therefore, since we have to buy one or the other, they still compete, but they happen to be more chill about it. I think that's another smart thing to do too, because instead of trying to take down like your rival or whatever, if you work with your rival, you probably will do better in the long run. But you know, that's just me. The next thing I want to talk about is the fact that they obviously have been listening for an seemingly obscure character that honestly hasn't been relevant since 2008 and even then <laughs> that relevance was absolutely trashed thanks to Microsoft but to put characters that seem so obscure into the game it really shows that they've actually been listening now not to get cynical but you know from a business perspective it's actually a brilliant move yes you may have lost the amount of and it's not even to say that a big character like Master Chief or Sora would happen uh, in the not too distant future. I mean, you still got two mystery slots left in the DLC. But instead of going for the big name obvious, they went for what the Smash faithful would be the most excited for, which is Banjo and Kazooie. And that's a smarter move because here's why. They say that any publicity is good publicity. Well, that's both right and wrong. 
there's the quality of that publicity. You don't want garbage publicity, you want solid publicity that makes you look some type of way, depending on what your goal is. So say for instance, uh, Master Chief got in instead of Banjo-Kazooie. Would it have been bigger? Yes, it would have been bigger because that Master Chief is, is Microsoft, it's Mr. Microsoft, and the reach would have been far wider. But here's the thing, the quality of that reach would have been a lot different. Would you have people crying and screaming for Master Chief? You'd have people crying for it, but, I mean, not crying, but you'd have people, damn, I already messed it up, screaming for Master Chief, but they wouldn't be crying for him. People were actually crying because Banjo and Kazooie got in. Like, big YouTubers were teary-eyed because Banjo and Kazooie got in. That's how serious it is. And from rather from a marketing perspective or a humanistic perspective, I'm going to go with the crying. Like, seriously, because that that's that means so much more. And the quality of that is so much better than just mass appeal. But the humanistic side is very, very powerful. It's like, say, for instance, uh, all publicity is good publicity, right? So you have 10,000 business cards and you hand out 10,000 business cards. Yeah, you've reached 10,000 people, but it's like, eh, there, there's no story behind it. Like, you know, who cares? It's just, it's just some guy or just some person or whatever the case may be that's just handing out business cards. But uh, let's, let's add story behind this. Uh, this person that was handing out these business cards uh, has been trying to be successful at their business for like the past 20 years and they've always been like snubbed like at every step of the way and it's garnered a fan base behind them uh, that's wanted it and they've also felt snubbed and slighted every step of the way because they wanted this to happen so bad uh, they wanted this thing to be you know bigger than themselves so which one do you want to go after you want to go after the guy that's you know who cares really like it, it'd be exciting for a little while and then you just kind of go on with your day or do you go with the story of something that has meaning behind it that has a story that has a past to it i'm gonna go with the past thank you very much like that's gonna make number one it's a good story it makes you look phenomenal whether and again not to say that you know nintendo's playing 4d chess they may they may not who knows because nintendo definitely does have to nintendo sometime they do some really stupid things they're not stupid stupid because they've been a <laughs> nintendo is the oldest company like oldest gaming company by far nintendo has been around, you know, they're making playing cards or whatever back in the day. They've been around for over 100 years. They do dumb stuff from time to time, but they're not stupid. If I'm going to, again, rather it be from a humanist perspective or just a, a business perspective or both, there's nothing wrong with having both, by the way. I'm gonna go with the humanistic one. I'm going to go with the, the passion-driven one. Uh, Master Chief getting in isn't really passion. It's more of just for funsy. Like, ah, that Master Chief's in Smash? That's awesome. That's cool. Okay, next thing. Banjo-Kazooie is like, oh my God, that's my childhood. That's my everything i grew up with this character and that means so much more to me it energizes the base as some politicians would say or do before campaigns you get that base hype that hype uh, gives you all that free quality publicity not just regular but quality quality and then of course you get the caveats to come with another character being added cloud's inclusion you know it, it helped bridge the gap between square enix and, and nintendo more or less there were other things that happened to help bridge that but it definitely was part of it and you got like a bunch of square enix games coming not the best games of them but they're solid were you and kim being added it helps the the capcom relationship which capcom you know i capcom you piss me off with the the the, the cheapness that you like to convey when you don't even need to but shout out to you for getting us an extra two gigabytes of RAM on the Switch. I don't think we would have those two gigabytes if it wasn't for you. So shout out, you pissed me off. And then of course you got the likes of Joker getting into Smash. Sega's already got a, a solid relationship with Nintendo, but the fact that Joker's been added, you're getting Persona S, although it should be R, uh, you're getting Persona S on the Switch. And I'm pretty sure you're probably gonna get more titles to come following that. Another good thing, or at least the part that you probably want to focus on more, is it means that a Banjo-Kazooie, whether it be a sequel or a remake or a remaster, seems more and more likely to, to appear on a Nintendo console. Microsoft can end up working as a, and it already does that, especially with Minecraft and Cuphead, as a third party developer. But the level of prominence that has been brought back to Banjo-Kazooie just because of the Smash reveal, like the searches for them have went through the roof. Now, granted, they had nowhere else to go but up, 
because they've been irrelevant for a long time as much as I love them but that boost just the the smash effect has on characters just like just like Kid Icarus uh Pitt's been irrelevant since like what the NES and after being debuted in Smash Brothers like not too long after some years after Sakurai made you know Kid Icarus Uprising he got a new game since he hadn't had one since like eons ago same thing can happen for Banjo and Kazooie no question on that and the further support that you get a little tidbit with them with during that Nintendo Direct mentioning that there's more titles to be shown off like as time goes on and Nintendo's definitely not going to show every single game that they have in the pipeline they have a ton of games in the pipeline that haven't been mentioned yet that could be one of them and a nice little nugget to add on top of that too is you know Nintendo being a Japanese centric uh, company it shows that they give a crap about the West I mean they should because there's a lot of money in the West for them a lot of money uh, but it shows that they listen to their Western fans. They did a very smart double header, uh, Dragon Quest for you know for the Japanese fans, and Banjo for the Western fans. That double reveal was brilliant because everybody's happy with that. The biggest thing for me though is that I just love the fact that it pays homage to such a good character. I mean, it's not they're not like groundbreaking or anything, but. They're genuinely lovable characters, Banjo and Kazooie are. Their whole world is, it's, it's, it's a neat place. It's something that deserves to be explored. It's something that deserves to be, it, it definitely deserves to be rescued from the depths of obs obscurity. That's 100% certain. That's something that none of us should have any kind of arguments on. And with an ever increasing amount of, of shooters because developers are so scared to try anything new it's just a beautiful refreshing thing to see uh, a classic platformer collect a thumb whatever you want to call it which is you know it's a combination of both uh, to make a comeback we need more of that we need more expressive artistic fun characters not more shoot shoot shooty shoot 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 we've got a ton of those uh, we're good on those but in conclusion smash brothers ultimate or even its entire series the biggest or at least yet another of the biggest things to add to why banjo kazooie's inclusion is so important all the different benefits and everything that surrounds banjo kazooie being added to smash brothers ultimately is one thing because smash brothers ultimate or even the entire series it isn't just a game it isn't just a celebration of gaming it isn't even just a celebration of the director working on it although he works himself to the bone it isn't just Nintendo jerking itself off about its massive library. Well, maybe a little bit. But it's a celebration of, well, everyone. What makes gaming great isn't how good you are at it or all the expensive things you can afford. What insider info you have or whose console or franchise is better than whose. It's the experiences and emotions we have gotten from these characters. You want to see these characters that you've gotten angry at, these characters that you've been shocked by. These characters you've laughed with, these characters you've cried with, and characters that you fear for their lives. You want them to be a part of something that celebrates them and celebrates the experiences surrounding them and what brings us all together. And after 20 years, they're home. Oh shit, I forgot to say, it's about respect. Okay, sub to my Patreon, bye. Yeah.